What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Fallout Craft. You guys really like this series, and I'm actually really glad to hear it. We've been doing a bit of work here, and last time I believe we actually finished uh, replacing all the green wool with various other green blocks. And now you can see we've got this kind of patchwork type style to uh, make this look like a very apocalyptic type situation much better than just blank one textured walls and as you can kind of see here throughout some of the other areas or other structures in diamond city we started to do that with the brown wool as well and if you don't remember everything was built with wool like this it looks rather plain it doesn't look terrible but it just looks very very plain the other thing i'm noticing is just well, everything's very square. We've got to get more shape into this. And I've started to do that over here with this build. So we've added, you know, we've gotten rid of some of the corners, rounded that off a little bit. We are starting to kind of push the boundaries of depth a little bit with, you know, the corner removal, but adding trap doors to sections of the wall, the staircases add this nice little gap in the wall, which make it look like it's been knocked out or something. Uh, you know, you have uh, roof designs now in some way that add shape and depth to some way. So we, we've started to kind of push that a little bit further. There's a whole lot more we can do, but there's going to be a lot of testing that we're going to have to do to do that. But in this episode, I want to talk about blocks, color, block palettes. Sovereign Alien posed a question in the last episode, which is a very good question, and I'm going to try my best to answer it. Though, to be honest, it's a bit tricky to answer because there's just no right answer. So let's see, we've got to put that down here. And I'll just blend that over with blocks like that. So what is a block palette? Well, it's much like in painting where you have a color palette, uh, you know, in this case, for example, we're using browns or reddish browns. It's a, it's a set of hues, I guess, uh, or colors. In this situation with the browns, you can see we're using uh, spruce or acacia planks, I should say. Then we're using brown terracotta and stripped acacia logs. And if we look at this in a, I guess maybe a, a more lit area, there's our log. And we're gonna do that with the log as well because we have two different type of textures on this log block. Then we have the acacia planks, and then we have the brown terracotta. And if we look at those blocks, they're rather similar in color. They've got this nice kind of reddish brown type situation happening for them, which alters a little bit depending on uh, just the block. So for the logs, you can see we can actually get three different types of patterns out of it. We have the horizontal log where the textures appear to run horizontally through the block. Then you have the vertically placed one where they go up and down. You can kind of see that in the pixelations happening there on the side. Then you have the cut through or the actual ring side of that log where you can see the rings in the, in the tree log. And that has a slightly different color to it as well with a little bit of that reddish acacia type outer log texture as well. So with the log block itself, you're getting three blocks in one and you can put them in different facing uh, situations like this where you can kind of uh, you can kind of just get a different type of uh, arrangement for that one block. Then you have the brown terracotta block which is very similar in color as well but not completely and it does have a slightly different hue but it also appears to be much smoother. There's not as much uh, contrast in the pixels within it, or they're just arranged in such a position where it blends better together. So that plays very nicely in the wall as well. You can kind of see how that works here next to some of the other blocks. Uh, they just stand out so well. Then of course you have the acacia planks, and that is a little bit more of a contrast that has a little bit of a darker color to it. 
Uh, there's some clear definition with the planks, with the pixels, uh, but you still have some of that red in there that kind of ties into some of the other blocks here. And then it's pushed a little bit further with some deeper browns. So what we're getting here is a palette of blocks in both color and texture. And with that, we can arrange it in any type of patterns. In this case, in a post-apocalyptic type style, you can see that we're arranging this in a type of patchwork. Uh, no clear definition of pattern or arrangement. It's kind of random, but it's, it's very well applied to a post-apocalyptic type style. And this is what I like to do in uh, situations like this where we're trying to cover an entire structure in a type of color where we can just arrange different textures or different blocks of a similar color to basically get an overall design done. So these three blocks become my block palette and through these block types I'm getting a, a color or texture palette. So Ilian had asked, do you put down blocks first to get an idea of a block or color palette, or do you just start building and let the build dictate that block palette? And that's an awesome question because it varies. There's no wrong answer, but it varies greatly on a number of factors. And some of that's kind of there in that, in that question. And what happens is it all depends on what you're trying to build. If in this situation, right, we've got Diamond City from Fallout 4, I already know what Diamond City looks like. And I have an idea of what blocks I need to use. So you kind of already are mentally putting together that block palette. You don't necessarily know what's going to work right away, but you kind of have an idea. So you go through your creative menu or your, you know, if you're in survival, you, you already kind of have an idea of what block looks like what, but you start to put together blocks from uh, the colors that you know that they are. So you're essentially already kind of prematurely putting that palette together. And then you may start building and you may discover, oh, this block maybe doesn't work out like I had thought. Or you may discover other blocks that work out better than the ones that you have already picked. Uh, so it kind of works both ways. With new builds that you've never really built before, it's not a bad idea to put that block palette together beforehand. And sometimes I will do that. I'll kind of think about, okay, I need to build a castle. Well, that castle I know is gonna have stone brick blocks, right? And you're gonna have maybe some smooth stone and you may have some cobble. What's this, tough? What is tough? See, I've never even, what is that? See, a block I guess I didn't know existed. This must be a new block. But that looks like it could work very well in a castle situation. It's very similar also to cobblestone. So if we look at this, it's it's got a similar texture pattern. We get good lighting on this. Let's see, let's build this up. Let's build this tough up. Is there some good lighting we can look at this at? Um, I get like time set noon. Oh, there we go. Wow. Right, brighten things up quickly. Uh, but yeah, you can kind of see how that tough block has a little bit more blues in it, maybe some green too, which is kind of close to, let's see, the mossy block. Do we got that somewhere readily available? That was in here somewhere. There it is. So that mossy block, whoops, is a good combination between these two blocks, but you can kind of see the color difference. So it really starts to kind of dictate your, your block palette. It really depends on what you think is gonna be good for your build and then laying that out and kind of seeing how that actually looks because an idea may look good in your mind, but then once you start to execute it, you'll start to discover things about that build or that block palette that you're using. I see a lot of people that like to build up structures using a single block type. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's great. But I, as a builder, I've come to kind of want to push my builds a little bit further. So I've learned to kind of 
draw in other blocks and uh, just by doing that you get to really kind of push the look of it a little bit further so you can kind of see now by adding just a little bit of stone into this brick stone wall uh, I've added a little bit of texture variation which kind of pushes the design a little bit you kind of get in this texture pack especially you get these uh, uh, this this what's this block uh, this uh, something textures oh boy I, I forget what it's called now it's called <laughs> connected textures I, I don't know why I can't remember that but uh, in this texture pack you get some nice connected textures which really helps to push your builds a little bit further as well so those are always nice to have if you're just playing vanilla nothing's wrong with that that's cool but then of course you can also add some cobble there so you can kind of see with this texture pack you have some cracked stone brick blocks and you have the cobble and if you don't have texture packs that do that you do have some crack uh, stone brick blocks that are vanilla as well so if we were to just add the vanilla ones in you can kind of see how that goes nicely with some cobble and then the contrast of that with the regular stone you just add a little bit more detail by creating a block palette uh, within a certain color and and it just looks so good and you can get more of an idea of that say in my uh, lands of elysian uh, medieval fantasy series where you can kind of see how different uh, block types work well together as well so right here with the fallout builds we've been doing a lot of uh, just you know builds that we know are comfortable with already because we've played fallout so much we kind of have an idea of what uh, what blocks will would work really well with representing builds that we would find in fallout and for example uh, you know, we built this so long ago that Prismarine was such an awesome block for the outside of Diamond City to really represent that kind of bluish, uh, greenish kind of teal color that is the uh, Fenway Park Stadium. But with the update now, we've got some other blocks that I've been kind of testing with over here on this side. And as you can see, we've got the copper blocks now. Now, these are the wax ones, so they're not going to... Um, age or or oxidize over time but we've added some ox some uh, uh, wax oxidized ones as well to kind of give it a little bit of age ourselves in areas that we would want it to kind of represent that uh, bit of age and decay that a post-apocalyptic building would have on it on its exterior so you can kind of see here uh, now we've kind of increased this block palette before we were just using the prismarine stuff, but this has a very close kind of hue or color to it as well. And if we really wanted to, I'm sure we could probably even tie in some of this warped plank stuff. Uh, maybe even, do we have it up here? Let's see. Let's test out diamond too. Let's do a little bit of a test here. You can kind of see now how there may potentially be even more blocks that we could add to this palette if we really wanted to. Now I'm gonna say right off the bat that the cyan or cyan concrete powder may be a little bit too blue. And I'm gonna say the same thing with the diamond block. It's a little bit too bright. Same thing with the cyan wool. But the remaining blocks, they're kind of close in color and we can kind of start to work those into it. Might look really good. So even though these builds are super old and we can see how a block palette was or could have been or you know we we're also seeing here with the updates of minecraft that potentially uh old builds can be renewed with the new blocks that are introduced by just simply upgrading the block palette once used by introducing a couple of new blocks which is what we're doing with the interior but it just goes to show you that uh, block palettes can change over time. You can kind of, um, you know, increase or, or update a build by laying out blocks on top of that old build to see what can be blended in to improve or make new an older build. Sometimes, like with smaller builds like this, this is the Red Rocket from Fallout, particularly Fallout 4. So you can kind of see a general a block palette coming together for this build and if you were to just look at this um palette and look at our our 
red rocket here you can kind of see just right off the bat how it's related and how it just kind of makes you think about the build but you know this is all post-apocalyptic here i do want to show you something that is very different from this so let's head over to future city some of you may be familiar with this this is the future city build that i did quite a long time ago and immediately what you're seeing for the block palette in this city is nothing but white blocks and blue blocks right so immediately that's uh what you're going to see as a color palette here white and blues a lot of white and blues but it gets a little bit more complex once you start to kind of dive a little deeper or closer towards the builds so for example those blues now become light blue and just regular blue glass and a lot of the glass is just those two colors and that's it for the whites we're using uh quartz so in this case a lot of smooth quartz here right chiseled quartz you're using quartz stairs and i believe they are using i think some other quartz as well in here too wow this is really bright here Let's see if i can kind of get a different angle so i can pick these out a little bit more a uh, block of quartz is also being used really hard to see but there is a little bit of texture variation this this one has uh this is the block of quartz it has a little bit of a pixel border here you can kind of see it good here so it has a little bit of a border the texture is very similar to the smooth one right smooth quartz block then the chisel one has more of a kind of uh, tile design in it then you have the stairs for the depth or uh, just shaping and stuff uh, the same thing goes with the slabs so i did lay these out for this entire project it was just it just made it easier to go back to that palette and quickly uh, pick out the block with the middle mouse button um, to just kind of quickly choose that block and go back to building you can kind of see how a uh, texture works in separating a pattern uh, it, it's block palettes are great and i know i, I realized i just kind of talked in many directions about this in many ways yes i've had to lay down a block palette to kind of uh dictate how a build is going to go but i've also had to lay down a palette to make it easier for me to work with a build so that i keep uh in mind the blocks i should be using now i need to go back to uh fallout area so let's go here but also in many ways like Diamond City or the Red Rocket here, even the Mass Fusion Tower, in many ways has a build also dictated or helped me in choosing what I should be using in a block palette. So it kind of go goes both ways, and it really just depends on the situation, the theme, the build. It's it's really really um, it's a really good question to ask. So thank you, Ilian, for asking that. Um, <laughs> I hope I haven't confused anybody and um, please ask me ask me whatever questions you like I'll do my best to answer your questions even if they are a little tricky to answer even though they may not have a right or wrong answer but hopefully I, I can bring some some insight to you guys so until next time this has been another episode of Fallout Craft I'll see you all later have a good one stay crafty and I hope I hope to see you next time thanks